This here is the Kelty One Man Fill Tent, and I've been testing this out since November 2019. I know the good, the bad, and I'm ready to share my review with you all now. Already here on the channel, I have videos on how to set this up, and I also have a preview where I've gone over every function and feature. In this episode, I'm not going to go over those details. I'm sticking strictly to the review for this episode. So if there's information that I do not go over in this episode, you will find it in the preview and also the setup episodes. What everybody wants to know is this. Do I recommend this tent? And the answer is very complicated. This tent is not perfect, but for the price, the current sale price, this is a very compelling option to consider. Speaking of which, the retail price of this tent is $200. At the time of filming, $90 at the Kelty website. There is a made in the United States version of this tent that runs $600. Do I recommend that? Absolutely not. For that price, this tent would have to be a whole lot better. For $90, it's a bargain. Even at the full $200 retail price, for some people, I could recommend this tent. But as you will see, there are a lot of pros and cons with this product. One thing to keep in mind about this tent is that it's heavy. Kelty claims five pounds, three ounces, and on my scale, it's over six pounds. That means this is a very heavy one person tent. But for that weight, you do get very robust, very strong, very durable materials. For an example here, the fly is made from a 70D nylon ripstop. And according to Kelty, it features a 3000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating, which means in theory that this is a very waterproof tent. There's reinforcements all over this tent and the stitching is also reinforced in the typical weak points. The mesh for the body is also a 70D. Kelty doesn't state whether that's nylon or polyester. I would assume it's polyester. Also, Kelty doesn't state what the floor material is, but I can tell you that it is some of the thickest material I've ever seen on a tent. It is very, very impressive. It is very robust. This tent does come with a ground sheet that's lightweight, helps keep the tent clean and also protects it. But even without it, in most cases, you wouldn't even have to worry about that floor because it is so thick. One of the coolest features with this tent is this awning. You could have two sticks, trekking poles, and you could stake this thing out. And you have this space where you are protected from the rain and the wind and whatnot. You can sit underneath this, you can cook, it's fantastic. When the weather gets bad, you zip it down, you hunker down. Speaking of which, you have this entrance here and you also have another on the other side. The other side doesn't feature an awning, but a single zip door. That means you have two vestibules, two doors, and lots of space to stow your gear on the outside of the tent. Talking about space, I will go ahead and measure the inside of the tent so you can see if this tent will work for you dimension wise. 41 inches tall at the peak. It is six feet and 11 inches long. If you're around six foot and shorter, this tent will fit you comfortably. If you're taller than that, your head may touch the back material and your feet may touch the wall. Width wise, you're looking at right at 28 inches. As you all can see here, the door is huge. It's easy in, easy out. You do have a bathtub floor. And in fact, the material comes up rather high as you all can see here. This is a good thing and it's also a bad thing. And I will talk about this in more detail in just a minute. At this point, I'd like to focus on the pros and cons of this tent. What I like and what I don't. Starting with the pros. First off, the storage bag is very unique. It is rectangular shape. I've never seen anything quite like it before, but it fits inside of your backpack much better than say your average round tent. It's an excellent storage bag, heavy duty. It's very well made, it really is. It's a roll top with a buckle. It's nice. Next, I've already touched upon this a little bit, but this tent is substantial. The materials are heavy duty. The zippers are excellent. The poles are excellent. Even the tent stakes are very good. The floor material is very thick. The mesh is very good. It's thick, but not overly thick. In other words, it allows for good airflow. Some mesh could be so thick that it could be almost like fabric. This is not the case. It will keep the bugs out, but will also let in some air. You have the bathtub floor, which will keep you dry and protect it from splashing, but you don't have to worry about that because the fly goes all the way down to the ground. That's a good thing and also a bad thing. It's good because you are fully protected from the rain and whatnot. It doesn't matter how hard the wind is blowing, you are going to stay dry. The negative aspect of this is that the fly goes all the way to the ground. That means very limited air will go underneath that and circulate inside. Next, you have two large doors to enter and exit. You have two vestibules. The zippers on these are excellent. The stakes are good enough. They are a little bit weak, but they haven't broke. That's important. Oftentimes, when you push a stake to that point, it will break. But as you can see here, that's not the case. It bent under some hard pressure, but it didn't break. 
So overall, the stakes, they're not bad at all. And you get plenty to set up this tent with. Speaking of which, you have guy lines, four of them, two on each side. So you really can stake this thing out. You can hunker it down, guy it out, and it doesn't matter how strong the wind is blowing. This thing will be fully hunkered to the ground. This does feature a high profile, which allows you to sit up, change clothes, do what you need to do. I like that. Also, the overall size of this is very good for anyone six foot and under. There's plenty of space in here for one person, some gear. Also, as far as looks go, I really like the design of this. It looks excellent. It's a very sharp looking tent and I like it. Is the tent waterproof? 100%. But that doesn't mean that you're going to stay dry in this tent. I'll talk about that in just a minute. This tent has seen over three days of solid rain without a single leak. Thunderstorms, heavy rain, actually a tropical storm came through and it didn't leak a bit. This tent is impressively waterproof as long as you make sure to seal up the vents. I'll talk about those two in just a minute. Let's see, a footprint is included, it's good quality, it's easy to set up, and you can set this up in multiple ways. You could do a hasty hooch setup where you leave the body behind and you set up with just the pole and the ground sheet. That works well. I like the fact that there is a two-person version of this tent, and that pretty much wraps it up for my pros. When it comes to the negatives, let's start with the side vents. There are two, one on each side, and they absolutely suck. They are the worst placed, worst designed vents I've ever seen. When I first got this tent in, I was confused by them. I was actually blown away because it was so terrible as far as the design goes. As you can see here, you have the vent, you have the support branch, and then you have the lip. That lip is so short that any bit of rain can easily get blown or even splash inside of the tent. So if it's going to rain, if it is raining, shut those or you will be sorry. Those are without a doubt the worst vents I've ever seen. Next, we have to talk about condensation. With this tent being so waterproof, it is unbelievably not breathable. Condensation will develop inside of this tent on the fly and even on the inside of the body, even with the doors open. And oftentimes that is a problem that you will have to deal with when you have tents that are extremely waterproof or even rain jackets for an example. Think of a trash bag, right? It is 100% waterproof, but it doesn't breathe at all and neither does this tent. If you're able to keep the doors open or maybe the awning open, you can get some good airflow and the condensation isn't terrible. But if you seal this up 100%, it can be extremely, extremely bad. If there is a breeze, it will lessen the amount that forms on the inside of the body but on the inside of the fly, it will be exceptionally wet. Overall, you will stay dry, right? Unless it's super windy. If it's windy and this tent is shaking, prepare for the body to get wet as well. This is simply a factor to this tent and it is something that you have to keep in mind. Think about where you are going to use this at. If you are in very wet areas, places that see a lot of rain, this may not be the best tent for you. But if you're in a location, where it's more arid, excellent. As long as the rain isn't coming down super hard or getting blown around, you can keep the awning open and that will help. Next, we have to talk about the water repellent treatment that's been done to this tent. Over time, since November, I've noticed that it has begun to wear in certain spots and it will show up as a lighter spot on the tent. I've never seen a tent do this before, not like this. It's a lighter spot, it's a discoloration and it's just randomly all over the fly here. When it's raining, you can see where the treatment is no longer present as it doesn't bead up. Now, so far, this does not affect the water performance, the waterproofing of this tent, but it is something to keep in mind. It would be my advice if you plan to purchase one of these. Every six months, treat this thing and you should be good to go. If you don't, there's no telling what will happen in say, in a year, two years, I don't know. As far as my list of cons go, that's it. While there's not many, they are substantial. There are many reasons not to purchase this tent, mainly ventilation and condensation, and also the odd issue with the discoloration and the waterproofing. Speaking of which, when I received this tent, the waterproofing felt strange. There was a weird coating to this tent and you could feel it on your hands. It was very chalk-like. Nah, I don't know. I've gone over the pros and cons for the one-man field tent. Now I have a message for Kelty. I like this tent quite a bit. I really do, especially for the price points. When it comes to military grade products, they could be much, much more expensive. The quality here is very, very good, but there are issues. There are things that you all can do to make this a better product. And these are my suggestions. First off, the tent needs vents that can be opened even when it's raining. 
and as is, that is not the case. Go back to the drawing board and fix this because this tent desperately needs ventilation. Next, this tent needs more stakeout points, namely here on the sides, one here and one on the other side. These two stakeout points will provide this tent with a lot more ventilation and airflow. It would make a huge difference. Next, we have to talk about the stake off points. These would work so much better if this was a bungee material, if it would stretch. Because you've used this strap material, it can be hard to get the perfect pitch. With some bungee cords added, it would make a huge difference. The last improvement that I have for this tent could come in one of two ways. First off, you don't need these super high bathtub floors if the fly goes all the way to the ground. All this is doing is limiting airflow from coming inside of the tent. And also, since it's so high, moisture collects on it. So I advise this, either bringing down the bathtub floor or raising the fly up some. Both would work perfectly. I think a combination of the two would be best. Lower this, raise that, more airflow, better ventilation, less condensation. So there you have it everyone, pros, cons, and improvements to make this a better product. In the end, I really do like this tent. I like the design of this tent. It has a lot going for it. Even at $200, there's not many products out there that can match just how durable and stout this tent is. It's extremely waterproof, but at the same time, ventilation is poor, condensation is bad. So if you're considering purchasing this tent, Ask yourself, can you live with the negatives? Can you live with the issues that this tent is going to present? It's not lightweight by any means, but it's stout. It really is. The only other military tent that I can think of that really compares to this is the Light Fighter one person tent. The Light Fighter is military grade. It is used by the armed forces here in the United States, and it is a very good product, but it costs quite a bit more than this. Speaking of price, if you're considering this tent, I would go out and purchase it right now. The fact that this is being sold at Kelty.com for 90 bucks leads me to believe that this tent may not be available for much longer. So if you want one, grab one now. For 90 bucks, I think it's a bargain, even with the issues that it presents. For my review of the Kelty one man filled tent, that is it. Those are my thoughts. I purchased this tent with my own money. These are my own thoughts. The outdoor gear review is agenda free. I'm never going to try to sell you anything. That's not what the channel is all about. I provide information for you all to make educated decisions and that is it. No bull I'm not like other channels. I don't get a commission. I don't get affiliate dollars. YouTube has become a marketplace of people lying to make money and it's wrong and I don't like it. And together we're telling those other channels and those companies that those practices are over. If you want to support a channel that is 100% agenda free, you could do so right here with the Outdoor Gear Review through Patreon. I do appreciate it. Everyone take care, strength and honor. I'll see you all around. Bye.